My question with the flash is how was it never not going to fail at the box office? It had so much against it. If you look at the past DC movies, I'm repping, I'm repping today. I'm a, I'm a fan. Okay. Uh, but the last few DC movies have been awful as far as the box office is uh, concerned. Shazam was literally in the box office for three weeks and then on to streaming. Like that's nuts. So like it had so much like negativity around just people being excited for DC movies in general. It just wasn't there. And then you have the Ezra Miller stuff that I've talked about so much on my channel, but I don't think it could be understated how significant that is toward this box office. There are people who chose, including myself, I have not seen The Flash yet. Now, I'm hoping to be able to go tonight because I was waiting. I wanted to punish DC a little bit. I'm sorry if that offends some people, but I, I it's not really about Ezra Miller as a person, even though I totally disagree with Ezra Miller and his actions and all that kind of stuff. It was mostly about how Warner Brothers was so greedy and they just never even made one single statement about Ezra Miller and all the different stuff attached to Ezra. And like, why? Why? Because they wanted to try to get as much money as possible. I think that if they had actually talked about it and said, look, you know, the movie was made before Ezra Miller did all these things and we're definitely not having him back. And, you know, if they did all those things, I think it would be a different story, at least for me and people I know. But for me, I chose not to go to the movie theater. And I know that there are lots of other people who did the same because they were disappointed with how Warner Brothers handled this situation, not because they didn't want to support this movie, period, but because Warner Brothers refused to take any kind of ownership of the problem and give any kind of you know, clue to how they were going to move forward with Ezra Miller. They just didn't do that because they were so concerned about the box office and it came to bite him in the, you know, where anyways, uh, but there, there was a lot else going into this as well. You know, the announcement that James Gunn is going to be taking over DC and the looming doom of, of this universe just going away and it not mattering. I think that is also super significant. So if you take all those considerations in, mixed with how much this movie costs to make uh, because they they had been trying to get this thing off the ground for a better part of a decade. Like there wasn't a way, I don't think, towards success for this movie, looking back. Now, I think that they had to put it out, but I wish they would have done it a little bit differently so that I could have supported it, so that other people could have supported it. And again, you know, this isn't a judgment thing on people who did. Okay. It's just personal conviction. We're all different people. We have different perspectives on how to deal with these things. I chose my route. You chose your route. That's fine. But I think that there were more people that were, you know, lined up with me than at least Warner brothers thought. And they thought they could get away with, you know, being quiet about things. And that obviously didn't work. Also, let's face it, uh, The Flash, as much as it, it's in the name, it's not as flashy. I can't believe I did it, but I did it. It's not as flashy as Superman or Batman or even Aquaman. I think Aquaman is even a little bit more known than The Flash. So I think that there was probably a little confusion from the general audience on why this movie was being made and who this character was. And then once again, you didn't have Ezra Miller going and doing any press for it. Nobody did any press. Now, it's a little bit different right now because of the writer's strike and like late night TV shows are out of the picture and maybe some other avenues that Warner Brothers would typically use to market their movies. They just didn't do any of that. They relied solely on commercials. You know, you didn't see Michael Keaton going around and talking about this movie. You did see uh, Supergirl going around and doing a couple things, but it wasn't enough. And I think that there's value in doing those junkets and uh, going on the late night TV shows. And maybe we're going to see that again come to, you know, be a, an issue uh, for some of these movies coming out this summer without, you know, late night TV shows. Not that that's everything, but it's part. 
of the mechanism of marketing a movie. And that just wasn't there for the flash. So I think that there's a lot, there's a lot to learn, uh, from, you know, the flash's failure. Uh, but I think for Warner brothers, what it means for them is that they're just going to have to bite these losses and continue, uh, continue on their path and start fresh. Uh, I think what we're seeing right now is that audiences are waiting for the new thing, the thing that they feel is going to matter. So if that is Blue Beetle, they need to say it. <laughs> like, I know James Gunn went on a podcast. I talked about it last week about how he's saying that Blue Beetle is the first DCU character. Uh, they need to get out ahead of that movie and and shout that from the rooftops if they want people to go and see that movie. Uh, it looks good. Uh, the the budget stuff is a little, uh, you know, the graphics and everything. It looks, it looks like it was made for streaming right now. I'm going to hold my judgment until I actually see the movie, but I'm excited for it. But, uh, I think they need to tell the general audiences that this is where we're starting. If they want people to come out and see this movie, because a lot of people are just waiting for Superman legacy. Uh, and you know what, what's going to happen with that. They, they want to see the new stuff. They want to know the new casting and all that stuff. And for that, man, the pressure that James Gunn must be in right now, like that he must feel like, could you, could you imagine <laughs> like this is going to be probably in the ballpark of a $300 million loss for Warner brothers, this movie because of the marketing, because of the reshoots, because of the budget, because of how little it made opening weekend, it's only going to get worse. Indiana Jones is coming. And I know, some people, some people think it's not going to make that much money. It's going to make money. It's Indiana Jones. Um, but all that being said, James Gunn must be under an incredible amount of pressure now to produce and to make good movies and to make good decisions for DC uh, moving forward. Because this, this movie that they, they touted as, you know, one of the best superhero movies ever made. Wow, what a failure. Uh, now, let's take a look over here and just compare The Flash to the other, the last five, at least, uh, DC movies and see where it lines up. Uh, number five, you got Wonder Woman 1984 with $17 million. Uh, Just remember that was like at the height of the pandemic. Uh, you had Suicide Squad, the Suicide Squad. I didn't want to fit it all on the same line there. But $26.5 million, which still was not good. Not good. A lot of people love that movie. I thought it was decent, uh, but twenty six point five million. Eh. Uh, Shazam two, Fury of the Gods, uh, thirty point five million, uh, looked at as a complete failure, but its budget wasn't as high as the Flash with fifty five point one million dollars. This is like when you look at all these movies together, it's just, ooh. It's been a rough couple years for Warner Brothers as far as DC Entertainment goes. Uh, but you know what? We got Black Adam there leading the pack. And I got to say there's something about that. <laughs> like I'm I'm actually pretty happy <laughs> that the Black the, the Black Adam movie did better than The Flash. I don't maybe call me petty, but I actually like Black Adam. I thought it was a fun film, kind of like the heavy metal version of a uh, 2000s hero movie i i just dug it i just dug it hey thanks for checking out this clip from the daily reel my monday through thursday live youtube show about movie news and all that kind of stuff uh things about batman and explosions and batman and explosions and if you like that kind of thing think about subscribing anyways uh youtube has another video over here that they think you'd enjoy so maybe check that out and i will see you in the next one